This one's been a popular request for me, especially lately, and I have a feeling I'm about to figure out why. I have never heard Ginger. Yes, not the first time I will have been accused of living under a rock. Thank you so much for these suggestions, and I absolutely love these live one-take performances because you really get a sense for how the vocalist operates. I'm excited to dive in. wonderfully velvety, textured voice she has. Wow! She does a really good job of subtly moderating her vocal weight. Ah, even though there's not a lot of rangy jumps or even a lot of dynamic changes so far, she's building in dynamics and interest to this subdued section of the song. This is a mark of a truly tasteful vocalist, not just a singer. I'd heard she was a screamer. I'd heard that much, but I was not prepared for that deepness and the width of the texture. Having done some spirit box recently on the channel and working with Lauren Babick, who's a fantastic harsh vocalist, you see across all three of these singers how being a female is has nothing to do with whether you can create these terrifying, low, full-bodied screams. We'll unpack her technique here in just a little bit, but I want to hear more. If you'd like help with the foundations and freedom mindset necessary to do what she's doing with your own voice, click the link below and join the free course in the video description or the pinned comment. You hear how she's changing her placement around? First of all, this section of clean singing has a brighter, slightly more aggressive, weighty feel to it, which makes sense. It's later in the song. She's just come off of this incredible screaming. But it's not just that this whole section has been brought up a notch. It's that when you listen to things like what she just did there, listen again. You can't tell when I wave my feet. Wave is very forward. Wave my Wave my, and then listen to what happens in the word afterward. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. She's being very dynamic with where she experiences the vibrations her voice makes. Wave my love. It's not a static resonance or static placement. She's not always singing like she sang my, my, wave my. No, it's wave my. Placing it back, placing it forward. Listen for more of that as she continues to sing. This is part of what makes her voice, her singing voice, so rich. And she's doing it while she's screaming, too. We'll cover that in a minute. When I wave my I like that entrance from Fry there. Sounds like there might be a bit of subtle layering in there, or now that I think about it, it's probably just a subtle doubling effect, not an actual double of her voice that's bringing in that extra texture on some of those screams. Let's unpack her technique a bit. Look at her mouth as she's doing what she's doing. Okay, going back. She's got a highly developed and honed false chord engagement going on here, which you absolutely cannot develop overnight, but you can start to feel out the sensations that will help you develop this. And it starts by sighing. These are exaggerated and messed with sighs. <sighs> okay, now, how did I go from sighing in a normal voice to sighing with that deep growl sound? I did so by making my sigh more desperate. <sighs> <sighs> it's not just, <sighs> it's exasperated or <sighs> withdrawn. <sighs> Let your voice crack and go back and forth in and out of <sighs> primary chord engagement and this <sighs> exasperated sound. And then when you feel the sensation of that rumblier uh, sound come into play, <sighs> Add support to it. Poop muscle support. No, no. Again, this takes time to hone, but it's so fun to experience. Then, and here's why I told you to watch her mouth. Most of the pitch differences that you are perceiving are not due to her changing anything with the source, which is the sigh. It is the shape of her mouth. Sometimes it's wide, sometimes it's bright. She's doing the same thing with her singing, right? And that places it in different places, creating uh, this, this brighter or darker, fuller sounding singing voice. It's the same thing with her screams. Oh, oh, oh. Very, very drawn low mouth. Even if I made it, and then, ah, ah. Ah, 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 ow, ow. Huh? And then the very last thing that I'll touch on here with her technique is she removes the sigh from the engagement. Once she gets the low rumbly sound, 
She simply creates a hard onset. Ah, goes directly into it. But you have to feel it out initially with the sigh. And here's why it doesn't matter whether you're male or female. This has nothing to do with your primary chords. Your primary chords are what define the, the voice that you have. This is just false chord and a little bit of upper constrictions inside the throat. So your primary chords are disengaged if you're doing it right. That's why males and females can sound equally deep and textured with this technique. The lies. Did you notice how the pitch of the scream changed? It's more timbre change and not, not a note per se. It's all in the mouth. takes a lot of practice and a lot of introspection in terms of how things are feeling to dial in the level of texture that she has. Ooh, that was some good stank, as Lauren Babbitt would say. Side. That's beautiful a slide there. Kind of cool whispery background vocals back there, I think. Cherish his life to be under. I really like how the how the vocal effects bring out that rich texture in her singing voice as well. They do a really good job not overdoing it. I gotta hear that section again. That's a new side to her singing that I ha haven't heard. Okay, two things. You hear the sizzly, yeah, not clean, but yeah, slightly gritty. There's this. There's this sheen on top of it. The same compression and support that I talked about her applying to her low growl, she's applying here to her higher singing notes. Not just a note, but she's adding support and holding back air. With the same area of her throat ugh, that she gets her sigh from, her scream from. If you learn the balance between primary chord engagement and false chord engagement, you are able to blend the two like she's doing here, and that's where you get sing screaming. Again, it's a balancing act that takes a lot of practice, but just knowing how some of this stuff works is a huge first step.
a master of technique and finesse. What an incredible live performance. I really enjoyed it. Thank you again for all your suggestions. Keep them coming. And again, if you would like to learn how to build the foundations into your voice, click that link below and join the free course in the comments or the video description. We'll see you for more.